Uh, I'm here with my dear friend, the famous American Cuban star, Luis Conte. He's the star. Hey guys, Cabo here from Beto's blog, and today I have to welcome to the show, as you just heard from Fred's introduction, one of the world's greatest percussionists, and it's my honor to introduce Luis Conte. Luis, how are you? Hey, Dan, how are you, man? Nice I'm, to meet you. I'm, I'm nice to good. meet you. Your work speaks for itself. You are such a story and such a personality. I guess if we kind of start back from the very, very beginning, you've always had the rhythm, I could tell from reading what you've written, and certainly hearing you play, you've always had that rhythm in you. Talk about that. Well, I mean, I was born in Cuba. You know, I was born in Santiago, and Santiago de Cuba. And there's everywhere in the island, but especially Santiago, is so, there's a lot of music, and music everywhere. So, and my family loved music. And that was a doctor, but he would have been a musician if he wouldn't have been a doctor. So was my uncle, the doctor too, but they all played music. So music was really a part of just, I don't even remember, First time I saw it, I just happened, you know, just there, you know. So rhythm, carnival, conga players in the in the corner of, uh, uh, at the park. You're riding your bicycle, you know, your little tricycle, learning with your dad's got the training wheels and stuff. And this guy's playing over there, you know. All that stuff is coming into your brain, whether you like it or not. I just haven't, you know, I have a gift. I, I believe it. my gift comes from comes from God, man. And and I was able to capture all that stuff since I had that gift, not even knowing it while I was down there, you know what I mean? I think you said, or have said, that it's like food in Cuba. Yeah. Music. Yeah. And especially the way the situation is down there, man, you know, people, you, you have to enjoy something, you know what I'm saying? And there's not, like, you know, here we have like how many cable channels you have on your TV, or there there's two channels, and you know, there's not much going on. So music is a big part. Of, of their life. But I gotta tell you, literally, I, I've gone back a couple of times. I one, one time that I was back, at one point, I was just walking by myself in my hometown with my camera, you know, just daydreaming and thinking about the past and stuff. And there was so much, I'm going, I'm walking, there was so much music, I finally went, okay, I'm gonna go somewhere quiet for a minute. Because <laughs> you, the people playing in that corner, the people playing in the other corner, they're playing at the park. There's a museum of carnival and there's music piping out. Then you walk by a house and they got the radio blasting and it's just going all the time. So it's like it's food. <laughs> well, well, we know you know your instrument. We know that. Kind of, yeah. Okay, yeah. June of this year you're going back out with James Taylor. Yeah, in June we're gonna do. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going with East Coast somewhere, and I know we're playing Fourth of July at Tanglewood in the Berkshire Mountains, which is an incredible venue. I don't know if you've heard about this place. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, with the Boston Symphony. It happens every year. We, James pretty much does it almost every year. We did it this past 2014, we're doing it this year. So that's part of the trip. All, a lot of East Coast, yeah. Now I know for a couple of years, for a lot of years as a matter of fact, the Modern Drummer Reader Polls were selecting you hands down. That must have made you feel good. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's just super to, I mean, you know, as a drummer's magazine, drummer percussion is, you know, is your, is your colleagues, you know, so that's really special, you know, for me. Well, it makes sense because you've been out with Phil Collins. Yeah. Spent some time with Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Eric, Cl Eric Clapton. Yeah, I never toured with Eric, but I've recorded with him. You've recorded with him and you've been in the studio a lot. Yeah, Phil and Madonna and Steve Winwood and Jackson Brown. As a matter of fact, it, as a matter of fact, it goes in the family. I think you were telling me is a piece of Luis Conte's trivia. Your son's first gig was with who? That's right. My, my son's first with Madonna at the Grammys. <laughs> we were the opening act, actually the first thing at the show. I forget, uh, it's quite a few years ago now. And uh, it was, she had her hit called Music. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were at rehearsal. Because I've worked with Madonna since back since 85. And they called us, hey, don't we do the Grammys and stuff. And she said, hey, we need a couple more guys. Because this is a lot, you know. We have loops and stuff, and you know, we need a couple, I think we need a couple more percussion players. I said, okay, well, let's call Leon Mowgli, who's a great jam gender player. Uh, we got this other guy, oh, his name escapes me now. 
And then I said, well, you know, and then we need a guy, we need a guy to play big drums. We need big downbeats. You know? And my son Louis plays drums. And she's, I remember this like, like right now, she goes, oh, who's that? I says, well, I can get my son Louis. Yeah. Is he cool? Can he do it? I go, yeah, just great, bring him in. And that was his first gig. <laughs> Holy down from there, I he guess. Two, yeah, right? Holy he got two huge there. pseudos, man. He was brutal. Yeah. Now, Luis, let's break down your instrument, what you know. Percussion, this is what you do. It seems to me that some people think they know what percussion is, but it's really an instrument amongst itself, into itself, isn't it? Well, it's, it's a it's a drum that came. I mean, a lot a lot of this stuff. I mean, actually comes before the actual thing that we know as the trap set or the drum set. You know, this is more primitive in a way, more primitive. You know, that's how I, I, I look at this stuff. Um, this drum is right here. Comes from Africa. The grandfather of this drum is called Ngoma, N G O M A, and it was it's from from uh, the Congo, from the tribe called Bantus, you know, from the Bantu tribe. It comes to uh, to America, of course, to Cuba with the slaves, and it becomes one of the main drums for Cuban music, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not saying that it's primitive, I don't know, maybe that's the wrong word, you know, but it's, it's just, it comes before a lot of the stuff. There's a lot of history to your instrument. If, well, yeah. there's, there's no instrument, I guess, because as a matter of fact, when I looked at what you, I know you teach and do some work mm -hmm. with artist works, how many instruments do you play? Because I saw it. I stopped I play, counting. I play lots of stuff, but you know, I started out the way you started. I mean, being Cuban, being there, you know, my first music was Cuban music. So you know, at my house, they would have. Part of my dad, like I said before, my parents loved music. And we had, they had players at the house. They buy troubadours and, and they, they used to love to sing and dance. And it's fantastic, right? So there'd be a little percussion. There'd be a guy playing bongos, not conga, but bongos, you know, and a clave player, you know, maracas. So those are kind of like my first instruments, you know, that I that I play. Besides the guitar, I used to play guitar. But in, in percussion, my I I actually blame my grandma for for this. My grandma, okay, my mother is originally from Havana. I'm from Santiago. This is the two opposite sides of the island. My dad was from Santiago. He met her when he was going to medical school. They got married and moved to Santiago. So my, my grandma on my mother's side was still in Havana. She would come and visit by bus and stay with us every, for three months and then go back. And every three months she would come to Santiago. She noticed that the radio was playing in my house all the time and all I was always doing was like, in my little playpen, I was like, you know, hidden stuff. <laughs> so she said, this kid really loves music. So when she comes from Havana, she brings me an instrument every time. The first one she brought me, she brought me a guido. You know what that is? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, this guy right here. It's not this one. But, uh, this one I go like this. That's a guido. So she, she just came from her hand and said, here you go, honey. Oh, cool. Uh, radio's on. Next song. I just sit next to the radio. Do that. Next time she came, she brought me some maracas. Then she came, she brought me some bongos, you know. And on and on. Let's talk about the, what I find interesting is just the way you pick up something and, and we're in your studio and there's so many instruments around. What's the mentality of a percussionist? As a drummer, for example, I'm holding the beat down. Yeah. What are you doing as a percussionist? Well, it depends on the music you're playing and the style. Give me an example. So the first one, which is like the one you said, you're holding the beat down because you're the drummer. So now we're playing pop music, right? Mm -hmm. Or rock, or jazz, you know. But that form of music, the drum set is the foundation, it's driving the bus. I'm the conductor. I'm the guy in the back getting the tickets. You know, from, did you pay? You know. Or the drummer is the chef, and I'm the guy that kind of helps him out and I get the extra, the assistant, and I put, a, put some extra pepper in there and extra salt. But I think a little, a little more, you know, parsley. That's the percussionist's job in that world. Now, if you are in a, let's say, an Afro-Cuban world, then it's the opposite. The music comes from these things, these instruments, and I'm driving the bus, along with a couple of other guys. And if it's the drummer, the drummer has to play like, a, think like a percussionist. Now that's the guy in front. And you know, I drive, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's that's how, how, how I look at, it, at the picture. So you really have to know the artist and what they need and what the music calls for. Yeah. 
It's not. It's just not simply. Let me sit down and just grab anything and hit it. No. Yeah. You have to. You have to hear the music. Know where the music is coming from. What it is. I mean, that example I told you. I mean, it could be Indian music from from India. You know. I mean, you could play drums to it, but the guys, the tabla player, and the and the you know kanjita players, those guys are the guys. Are, that's what that music. You know what I mean? So it just depends on the on the style. So you you walk in. I mean, I do all these sessions. You go you go in and you hear the. You gotta hear the track before you even know what you're gonna play. And you kind of sort of guide yourself that way. You strike me as the artist who, if someone says, I want this sound, they'll find it. And I have to ask you, because I saw on your website, what is the spur from Home Depot? Yeah, the spur is, well, we've, since then we found out there's a few different brands. But the one I related to is that we were doing, what you're talking about is I was doing, uh, working with James Taylor on a record that came out a few years ago called uh, October Road. And I believe he was working on the song October Road, but we have played, I have played certain things, you know. And James goes, uh, hey man, do you have anything that sounds like Spurs? I think we can use Spurs, that sound. And wow, I mean, that's really like left field. Who are you gonna think of having Spurs? You know, you know? But I know, you know, you know the sound, and uh, I've seen a commercial, and, I, I, and I've, I've, heard, I've, I've seen them before. I said, send the second on the engineer, you know, send somebody out there, go to Home Depot, and find a garden weasel. It's a, it's a thing, you know, for gardening. But it has these spokes like that, like a spur, and if you hit it, you know, it sounds like a spur. So, anything works, man. I mean, if you can find it, you know, it's, 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 it sounds, you know. It's not, it's not thinking, it's, it's the music, at least to me, the music tells me what it, what it, what it means, you know, I mean, you walk in now, let's say you, you're the artist and you have a song, you're the producer, and a good producer would actually let the player do, you, you call a certain player for some reason, or he likes what you do. So in this case, the producer calls me, the good producer goes, plays you the song, and says, well, what do you hear? You know, I think maybe a little shaker, or maybe, well, maybe it doesn't mean anything, you know. But the music tells me it's not like I, I don't really think. If you start thinking, I think you force it. I mean, you start forcing this thing, you know. I mean, I'll hear a song and I go, "This song doesn't need percussion. Why did you call me? I've done that." Really? Yeah. I don't know. I don't hear anything. I mean, and then they'll go, "Oh, well, we were thinking maybe you know, well maybe a, a conga or something, you know, whatever, or tambourine." And then I'll try it. I mean, I'm being hired, you know, so sure. But I'm not really here. I mean, there's a lot of songs where percussion is Eric Clapton's uh, Change the World. I worked on that song. There's like tons of tracks of percussion on that. And if you really listen to it, you know, it's in the mix. It's all there. And it's really like, if you take that stuff out, the song, I mean, it's still a great song, but the, the whole groove, the whole thing, just, it's not the same. Luis, how do you approach a song that was recorded in the studio without percussion? Now the artist is going on the road and saying, we're now going to perform the song in a different way. How do you approach that? Ooh, man. Well, you hear the song and, and, and I mean, is, who's in the band? Is there a drummer in the band? Is there another drummer in the band? That's the first thing. You know, if there's, maybe I'm the only guy, then I have to create like a hybrid sort of set with like a cajon or maybe a conga and like a couple pedals, you know, tamarino on one foot, you know, a cowboy on another, something I can, because I, you know, I, I'm using my hands, so I'll probably play a lot of cajon, if it's pop, you know, so pop thing. I was listening to a thing yesterday, I was driving back, Sarah Borellis, mm -hmm. uh, and I forget which song this was, I came on the radio, and I'm like, oh man, that's all cajon, it was just, there's was no was drum set, it was cajon, it was a cajon and some percussion. So it's just, I approach it as like, I just need to fill this up. I need to make the guitar player and the bass player and the, the artist, now that we're playing live, feel like there's a groove here. So whatever I gotta do, you know, every song is different, every situation is different, you know. A common question people ask me, you're competing against amplifiers and drums. Yeah. How do you do it? How, how does the sound work in your world? That is super difficult for the, especially for the hand drums. The stick drums and all that, or you know, tambourines, things like that, it's not such a big hassle, but the hands, because this is live and that's dead, it's gonna hurt. You can hurt yourself. 
if you don't hear yourself. You know, you've got to hear yourself. I mean, you're a guitar player, you can't hear, you know, a sax player, playing, you can't hear yourself, you, you don't play correctly, you know. So, you have to make sure that you are heard. I mean, you just got to bust the monitor guy uh, until he's got it right. Also, I don't particularly like them, but the in-ears, which is the more modern thing of things like that, there's more control to hear yourself that way. When you, I feel like you lose with the in-ears, you, you lose the, the room, you lose the air. But you don't notice it. But right now, if we put earplugs on and we're talking, it would sound totally different, wouldn't it? Sure, sure. So, it's, so I'm not a big fan of that, but sometimes if it's like with Phil, we wear in-ears, because it's, it's loud and and it's big, and a lot of people, and, you know, you can't even hear the count off. You know, you don't realize that you're a big, on a big concert like that, or with Madonna or something like that. The, the drummer, or whoever counts the song off, is counting off, off a mic. He has a microphone, like Jonathan with Madonna, back in the day, he used to have a mic, and he would like, next song, he would just pull the mic over, one, two, three, four, and we have it in the monitors, or in the ears. Because you can't, it's so loud out there, the crowd is going crazy, you don't hear the count. So you gotta, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. So, in-ears are great, great for that, but you have to, you have to hear yourself, and especially with hand drums, live hand, through a dead skin, it's gonna, you hurt yourself. You don't want to overplay, overhit it. And as to your, as to your various instruments, I could tell there's a lot of technique involved. Yeah. There's a lot of technique. Yeah. What is the one biggest piece of advice you could think of, because since you teach so much, you would tell to players, do this, stay away from this, or try and emulate that. Well, if you're going to study, again, in percussion, there's so many drums that you're going to do, but if we're dealing with hand drum, with a hand drum like this drum, or a jam bay, you know, the first thing I tell them, before you put your hand in there, you go, you play the drum, you don't beat the drum. Oh, okay, it's good to know. You start beating the drum, it ain't going to happen. You play it. Because it'll eat you up. This drum will totally suck you in, man. You gotta be in command of the thing, so you gotta play it. Be nice to it, play it. You know what I'm saying? So you have all these, all, all these, you know, you, you can play real loud, but I can get this softer, or I can play, or I can play. Not hurt yourself, because it'll kill you. What is your preference if you had your choice? Live performance, studio work, what do you enjoy the most? Uh, mixture. I can't, I'm, I'm like super, what do you call it, ADD, whatever you call it, like crazy. I'm like super hyper. I'm a hyper guy, I can't sit still. And it kind of translates to my music thing because I can't just do one thing. If I'm in the studio all the time, like man, I gotta go play. Then I'm out there on the road playing live. Oh man, I gotta go back to the studio. You know, so it's it's. Uh, I don't have a preference. I really, really don't. I mean, you know, it, it's. You know, um, you just hope you're in a really good band if you're playing live. You hope you're in a really good band playing with great players and the music is great, fantastic. And you hope when you go to the sessions that the sessions are fun. The producer is cool. They know what they're doing, but sometimes you can go into a recording session and you know it can be a nightmare because they have no idea of what you do or they don't even know what they want and it becomes you know this thing. You know. So you just that's all you can ask for. That is all good, and then you're happy. But I don't. I'm. I've never in my career. I mean, I've never just like done studio like for a long, long, long time or just long, long life for a long, long time. So I, I don't know. I don't. I can't. I don't think I can do it. If you weren't a percussionist, what would be your favorite instrument to play? Oh, I'll play the guitar. Oh, no hesitancy, right? Hmm? No hesitancy. No, no. Matter of fact, when I was, I think I was 12 or something, I told my dad, uh, going back to the Cuba thing, a friend of mine received, you know, we were all close to him in that island, and he got a, a letter from one of our friends that had left with his parents. And he had a bubblegum card, he had sent him a letter, and the letter had gotten through, and in the letter was a bubblegum card, and it was a picture of these four guys with hair like this. So we didn't even know who the Beatles were. Oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, um, they showed a newsreel at the movie theaters, between movies, 
And it was a common, of course, everything's common is propaganda. And there was a piece in the newsreel of like the corruption of the American and capitalist youth. And they were showing these four guys playing roll over Beethoven. It was the Beatles. And I saw that, and I was sitting with my dad, and my mother goes, those are the guys that I saw in the bubble moon card. Oh my God, I was like in total love with these cats, man. You know, so I told my dad, I want to play guitar. And I started playing guitar, and I love it. And, and hindsight, now that I've gone back, that I'm a, I'm a musician, I'm a grown man, and, and I went back there, I saw I, why I wanted to play guitar. In Santiago de Cuba, where I live, the main instrument is the guitar. Is there any area in the percussion field you have not yet gone to that you said, I want to go there? Yeah, I would like to like really take some time and if I have the time, because it's really time for someone to play tablet. Really? Yeah. Why is that intriguing? Why, why that area? I just, I love the sound of it and the, the intimacy of it, what's the right word? You know, it's just real complicated rhythm wise. I, I, it, it would like really opened up my mind to like more like to odd times and you know because they play a lot of they have these all these things they play you know 19 or whatever you know you just get more fluid in being able to play in odd time and I love the sound of the drum and it's just totally different than anything else I do the way you play it you know the technique of it you know I've taken a couple of lessons but you, it, that's a drum you need to like something you should do when you're real young and you got a lot of time folks this is Luis Conte. The best way I can describe it, if you can see this man play live, it's like watching emotion. You feel emotion, but you can watch it because his personality comes through when he plays, his technique, you could feel. You can almost listen to Luis with your eyes. Luis, we thank you so much. Good luck in the nomination. Best of luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and listen, James Taylor this year, yeah. 2015, yeah. go check him out. It's worth the price of admission. And I'm starting up a new record, too. It might be coming out sometime maybe at the end of the year. Oh, we got to keep an eye on that. Yeah. we got to look for that. you got to yeah. look for that. Most definitely. Luis, thank you so much. Cabo for Beatles Blog.